Hello and welcome back to the DIY BMS project. It's been over four months since I last released a video, uh, but the project hasn't been abandoned or forgotten. Life just got in the way and ha had to take priority for a little while. If you're new to the project, my name is Stuart and I'm the designer of the open source battery management system known as DIY BMS. Uh, in this video, we have a new release of the firmware for the controller. So let me show you the changes and the new features. Well, first up is a bunch of changes which I can't actually show you, as they're all internal code changes and there's nothing to see. However, I can show you that the controller now supports 192 cells in total, an increase from the previous of 128. Now, once you get over about 24 cells, the voltage chart on the main page becomes almost unreadable. I can show you that here by just temporarily increasing the number of cells. And the graph should change. So in this release, the data labels are automatically removed to reduce the clutter on the screen once you go over about 24 cells. You can still hover over the uh, chart to see the data. If you're using one of the most recent controller boards with uh, onboard current monitoring, the state of charge value and the amp power counts are now saved into the flash memory on the controller at 10 minute intervals. If you reboot the controller, those values are restored rather than resetting to the default values. I've also changed the, uh, the state of charge calculation, so it will now actually reach 100% fully charged. Previously, this would never actually reach this value due to the charge efficiency calculation. There's experimental support for RS-485 pylon tech emulation, which has been coded by a user named Rusa87 on, over on GitHub. More testing is required on this. I've not actually been able to, to use this or test it because I don't have this type of inverter. So if you are interested in communicating with your, your inverter over RS-485, check out the link in the video description. It's important to note that you can't use the external DIY BMS current shunt with this solution as that also needs RS-485 to operate, and the two are incompatible with each other. The major new feature added in this release is state of health, and that can be found in the charge and discharge settings. The state of health records the gradual cell capacity de decline over time. It does this by working out how many cycles a battery has had. A cycle is classed as a full charge and discharge. In my case, I'm using EVE cells and a full cycle is 280 amp hours. If we look at the data sheet for these cells, it tells us that they can expect the cell to handle 6,000 cycles before its capacity drops to 80% of the original. To put this another way, if you did a complete cycle of the cell every single day, it would take over 16 years to drop to 80% of the original capacity. Now these cycles do vary with temperature, the hotter the cell gets, the less cycles it can make. So keeping the battery at around 25 degrees centigrade maximizes the lifespan. In DIY BMS, we assume the uh, decline in capacity is linear, which it almost certainly isn't, but all these calculations are approximate anyway. So it should be okay for our needs. You can enter the values from the data sheet directly into the DIY BMS page. Here I've configured 6,000 cycles and an 80% expected drop in capacity after these cycles have been reached. If this is a brand new installation of DIY BMS with some fresh batteries, then you can leave the lifetime values as zero. However, as I've got an existing setup, I'd like to calculate approximately how many cycles I've already, already consumed. My battery has been operating since November 2022, so it has already been through a lot of cycles. But luckily, my battery inverter logs energy usage into and out of the battery. It's a SOFAR inverter, so I can log into its website for the information. The data shows my battery has been charged with 4.7 megawatt hours of energy and discharged 4.25 megawatt hours. This gives me an efficiency of just over 90%. So now for some maths. My battery consists of 16 EVE 280 amp hour cells which gives me a total energy storage of 14.3 kilowatt hours. So dividing the total energy by the total capacity gives me 328 cycles. If we multiply this by the amp hour value of the cells, 
it's 91,875 amp hours, which is the number I'm going to put into DIY BMS. The state of health is only updated once per day around midnight, as its value is going to change very slowly over time. DIY BMS has calculated my cells to be at 98.9% .9 of their original capacity, or just a 1% drop in 18 months. I'd like to thank you for the support of this project on Patreon, and also at the DIY BMS shop. Unfortunately, I've had to temporarily close the shop as I've sold all the stock I had. I don't have any immediate plans to open the shop at the moment. The update files for this release are available on GitHub as usual. And that wraps up this August release. Thank you for watching.